Hello and welcome to episode 22 of AFC Filed Still We Rise. We're here on Football Manager 2020 on YouTube. I'm Charlie and I just want to begin by sending over best wishes to AFC Filed manager Jim Bentley. Uh, it was revealed over the last couple of days that Jim's got some health concerns. He will require surgery. We just want to say that hope all that goes really well and uh, wishing him a speedy recovery getting back in the file dugout uh, when football resumes uh, for the upcoming season. All the best, Gaffer. In a throwback to previous episodes, we start proper with a correction. Uh, after doing some research and getting some really good info from Jack Connor, uh, that's at Filed Reporter on Twitter, uh, he's a filed commentator for all the games, uh, I can explain that the Scottish Challenge Cup, known as the Tunnock's Caramel Wafer Cup, due to sponsorship, uh, invites a number of clubs outside the Scottish Professional Football League to participate. Uh, starting in 2013, they had Highland League clubs. This was then expanded upon in 2016-17, uh, which is when Scottish Premiership development sides joined as well. Nowadays, there are two teams from Wales, two from Republic of Ireland, two from Northern Ireland getting involved. And in 1819, two uh, highest rated uh, sorry highest ranked clubs in the national league were invited to take part from the second round uh, the 2020 final between Wraith Rovers and Inverness Caledonian Thistle has obviously been indefinitely postponed uh, due to covid-19 pandemic since you were with us last uh, which was the FA Trophy semi-final second leg against Harrogate we've had one fixture it was uh, against Woking and very much a tale of two halves we took a 4-0 lead uh, prior to half time uh, Andy Taylor opening the scoring and then it was Kozolo, Jameson and Nick Horton with a direct free kick we sort of took our foot off the gas in the second half uh, Asal got two back for Woking. Uh, most disappointingly, though, Jack Muldoon missed a penalty in the last minute um, of extra time at the end of the second half. He has been criticised recently for his performance, especially by the board. Uh, so I wanted to give him the penalty, get him a goal, get him a bit of confidence. Uh, unfortunately, he saw his efforts saved by a Woking goalkeeper. So, not brilliant. But it's a win, and today's game is against Chorley. Um, I always wanted to include our local rivals in uh, sort of the games that we feature here on YouTube. But there's been a lot happening as well. Um, it seems that there wasn't very much happening in February and March for some reason. It's pretty quiet months, just game after game. Now things have sort of kicked into high gear as we've hit April. In the last few days, I think more has happened than in the last two months. We start with the Player of the Month uh, award. That went to our very own Nick Horton uh, with his three goals in five appearances, uh, beating the likes of Luke James from Hartlepool and Barrow's Tyrese Francois, uh, who is on loan from Fulham. It was then the turn of myself to pick up uh, another Manager of the Month award uh, for March. Uh, we had five wins in six. The only disappointment being that frustrating nil-nil draw against Dover Athletic. John Pemberton, second place, and great to see we've just talked about him, Jim Bentley, who has taken over from Dave Challoner at Hartlepool in uh, the world of Still We Rise. Uh, he has begun the uh, road back up to the playoffs for Hartlepool, winning uh, four matches out of six. 66% must be. Uh, David Haythornthwaite, very pleased with the award. Uh, he's uh, been very supportive as of late. That continued to uh, wanting to offer me a new contract. Uh, I only have a contract at the end of the season, as you often do when you start playing football manager. So uh, we had that to come, and then we got our intake of youth players. I haven't really looked at these guys yet. The friendly match between the under-18s and these uh, youth candidates is scheduled to take place on the 6th of April. That's in three days' time. So I was going to wait until that had taken place first. Uh, but he's, uh, Kenny McKenna, my assistant, has been championing this chap, David Barlow. 
Uh, his stats look pretty good for a youngster, you know. Anything over a 10, I'm quite impressed by. So, uh, his potential ability, though, you know, not brilliant there, is it? Something to work on. Uh, but that is a strong side party. Uh, the contract uh, came through. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it wasn't what I had expected. Uh, they offered me a contract 1.2k a week. Uh, longer suffering viewers will remember that right at the start of the season when I was looking at the staff, I realised that Kenny McKenna, my assistant, is paid more than I am. So I'm on 1.1k at the minute. He is on 1.2. And in our contract negotiations, I was hoping for around 1.4. They're just not willing to offer me that yet. So I'm not panicking. I'm hoping that by winning the league and hopefully winning the FA Trophy at uh, Wembley that we're heading back uh, down to London for, that gives me a bit of bargaining power. That gives me some influence. And hopefully that means I can get a little bit more cash out of David Haythornthwaite. Uh, there's been a lot of articles as of late talking about records we're going to break. Uh, we're in line for the record points haul, uh, not only for the coasters ourselves, but the Van Rama national record, which is 105 points. Victories, we've got 30 wins at the moment. The record's 31. Uh, so we can actually match that with a good uh, performance against Chorley. And then the goals tally, we've scored 102 this season. Uh, the record is 103. So we're doing pretty well in that regard. In terms of our team selection, it's fairly uh, recognisable by now. Fairly standard. Uh, the only difference I've, I've made this time is Muldoon's come in for Matty Kozolo. Uh, and I do want to put Andy Keller on the bench. Uh, We'll replace Bradders because uh, Andy Taylor is struggling a bit at left back. Um, he was beaten all ends up by a Sal for Woking's second goal. It was a clearance from a corner and he was quite out in no man's land and he went by him like he wasn't there. So uh, I don't think Taylor will see out the game. Alex Whitmore is also struggling. So I think we'll take him out of the team. Replace him with Burn, and then on the bench, I'm going to bring Lewis Montrose on because I think he can. He's got the attributes to be able to cover in defence if required. This is uh, the only fixture of the day. This will actually take us uh, two games clear of Barnet, um, hopefully with a win. If it does, the amount of games that Barnet have got left to catch us are dwindling. So Barnet have got six games left, which is 18 points. So 18 plus 88, this is what our maths lets me down, is 106. So that's their maximum total that they can get. So we're seven points away. Um, probably eight because we'll need one. One point in the bag, won't we? So that's three wins. So, whatever happens, uh, three wins out of three for the next games will uh, see us home. Our next few are actually, we talked last time about it being really tough. We've got Jim Bentley's Hartlepool, Ebbs Fleet and Torquay both in playoff picture, as are Wrexham. So, I mean, if we can get it done as soon as possible, I would be quite pleased. But obviously we also hope that Barnet will drop some points as well. Uh, yeah, it's always nice of a uh, football manager to explain something that I've already explained. They're obviously not aware of that, to be fair. Uh, but yeah, Andy Taylor, I think, will give him the first half. Uh, but that's it. I don't think uh, he's going to make the full game. Uh, the media predictions are that we will uh, do pretty well in this one. But it's a local rivalry. I've done a lot of press this week. I mean, we've had a press conference and I think I've answered three separate questions uh, that, have been, uh, that have been sent over. So I'm going to let Kenny earn his 1.2 wage by uh, talking to them. It looks like Chorley have already got an injury. I think I spotted there. 
I saw a flash of orange. I did indeed. Shoney Bar. I'm fairly sure that's not how you pronounce it. Uh, their left winger. Uh, it doesn't seem that bad in terms of condition. So, um, looks like he's on the road to recovery. Uh, this is a concern. I think Chorley will do well in this game. Uh, teams tend to raise their game for playing against their local rivals. But, uh, Williams here on the left, tackled and it's cleared. We're looking for that width again. There we go. Andy Taylor has made the run, ignored for now, but Muldoon into the box. And there he goes, an assist for Jordan Williams. Williams is 19th of the season, and Muldoon, you know, getting back on track here, it's him with the run, actually, Luke Burke, uh, made a good run himself, but sort of pulled out and let Muldoon uh, take over. <laughs> Muldoon just giving it to the fans behind the goal there, fair play. I mean, why not? Uh, but that's really good to see, especially from Muldoon. Um, as I say, he has been criticised in recent weeks for his performances. Uh, not always his fault because he's been in and out of the team. Matty Kozlo's played really well. Uh, he's scoring against Woking, after all, um, as evidence of that. But we've got Williams with a corner. Irwin in the uh, Chorley goal, dressed, I think, the same as I am, uh, with the, the light blue... National League top. Great running by Muldoon. Not a good enough finish though. Uh, Irwin, sorry, dressed in the classic National League blue uh, top. Black trousers or shorts, I suppose he's wearing. Uh, same as myself. And in fact, I will stay with that uh, with that outfit until, uh, until we get to the Premier League, at which point I'll put a suit on. Chorley with the uh, the attack here. There you go, Alex Newby. As I said, I expected them to sort of raise their game here. They've not got, well, they've not had much to uh, celebrate this season. But I think spoiling our day and getting at least a point out of this. Ah, oh, Jameson's not close to him. And Montgomery's being at his near post. Um, not good enough, really. And here they come again now. Blakeman is somebody I've... Uh, oh, I was about to say he's got a good left peg on him. And there he is, cross right the way through the uh, length of the field over to Chris Holroyd at the back stick there. See, look at this. Delivery by Blakeman. Just talk about corridor of uncertainty. Just between Andy Taylor and Carl Jameson. Um, really good goal. And I have to say, it's, it's a lot tighter than I thought it was going to be. I expect us to do our usual uh, race to, you know, 20, 25 shots. While the other team have three or four. But surely are, are doing pretty well to match us here. Um, and we're not always getting a highlight from dangerous uh, attacking positions. Yeah. Ah, Taylor flashes that free kick wide. Um, I've seen Nick Horton score actually a free kick uh, in recent days. He scored one against, it was the fourth goal against Woking. Burke now with the ball. Williams into the area. Great save by Irwin. I think that was a save. Uh, either that or he hit the post. Either way, unlucky for our Welsh midfielder on loan from Swansea, Danny Williams. Now, Burke cuts inside. We're, we're looking for the width. There's the width. Ah, oh, Burke with two bites of the cherry. Irwin matches it. Really good uh, performance by the Chorley goalkeeper there. Now, Williams dispossessed and then uh, fouls his man, trying to recover the ball. 2-1 uh, loss to Chorley, as it stands. Not what we were expecting, really. Um, certainly not when Muldoon's cross gave Williams an opportunity for his 19th goal of the season. He's been absolutely sensational. Uh, as have most of our attackers, to be honest. Uh, Jamie Proctor, I don't think we, we give the credit that he deserves to. He's got 21 goals. Then you've got Williams. Kozolo's chipped in with some absolute bangers. And we signed Muldoon halfway through the season. 
Um, he's fast, sort of got up to you know six, seven goals, plus he's making assists. Um, and here he goes again. What can you do from here? And it's a it's a second assist for Jack Muldoon. This time, laying it on a plate for midfield runner Nick Horton. Nick Horton there celebrating his co new contract that he got in the last episode with a, oh, a tidy cushioned finish. Just easing it in off the foot. Don't have to put a lot of power on it. Just diverting it past Irwin. And now, can we get a second? Uh, sorry, a third. A second in quick succession even. We are peppering the Chorley goal just as half time is about to strike. We're not going to want half time, are we? Taylor with the ball. What's he going to do with it? It's the third. Jack Muldoon. Andy Taylor with the assist. Muldoon now involved in all three goals. Two assists. One for himself. That is a performance. Considering that he missed a penalty against Woking. He has retaliated. Great feet. Just adjusted himself there to get over the ball. Kept it down. Irwin not a chance. And that is half time. What a half. This is on TV as well. The BT Sport Boys are in town. You know. Matt Smith give me the thumbs up as we go back into the tunnel. I'm really pleased with how things are going. But we did uh, make a decision that we were going to take Andy Taylor off at the break, didn't we? I say we, I mean I. Carl Jameson suffering a bit, but I'm going to leave him out there. Uh, the plan is actually Jordan Williams to come off at some stage. Um, Either for our loan signing, Jovan Malcolm, or Matty Kozolo, uh, who is on the bench for this one. Uh, in fact, I'll just encourage the boys, because I don't want to get complacent here. This is what happened against Woking in the second half. We took our foot off the gas, and next thing you know, they've pulled two goals back. So, I think, especially with it being 3-2, we just need to stay alert and... Uh, on top of our game here. Got to compete for every ball. That's a really good uh, example of that. But Muldoon with a tame effort into the arms of Irwin. I was saying before, Blakeman at left back is somebody I do quite like. He's got a, a decent peg on him. Um, although, I have been looking at the squad for next season. And depending on what we do with Andy Taylor, we're either going to need one. Oh, great goal from Daniel Williams. Stand and deliver. Gets on the ball, gets it back. He's actually coming back from Muldoon here. Burke's going to play inside to Muldoon, who's going to lay it back. Look at the space there. So much time and space. You have a coffee and a, and a Tim Tam biscuit. Williams with a great finish. The uh, Welsh under-21 international we brought in due to Tom Walker's injury. Uh, so he fires his first goal for the Coasters. But three assists by Jack Muldoon. A goal for himself. And we're 4-2 again. For the second time in two games. But as I was saying, sorry, before that, Blakeman does have a really good left peg on him. Um, and it's Carl Jameson with the corner. I've got a corner ball. Corner for, over from Nick Horton. Corner goal from Carl Jameson. Um, Oh, Irwin should do better there, but we'll take that every day of the week. One of the things that I will do at the end of this season is a corner tutorial. Just to show how we've scored so many goals. We've scored so many with uh, set pieces. We are top of the charts by miles. Um, I'd love to have a look at the other leagues and just see what the comparison is. Uh, we will do that, I think, this weekend. Uh, coming up, because I want to get the league out of the way. Oh, Muldoon with his second. This is the Muldoon show. Jack Muldoon, after missing a penalty, after being chastised by our own board. Oh, Irwin. Irwin with the comical early dive. But <laughs> Muldoon with the finish. It's 6-2. We have just hammered Chorley. And there's still 20 minutes to go. In fact, while we're here then, 
let's take some boys off. So, I'm going to bring on Jovan Malcolm for Jordan Williams. Inverted wing is probably his best one out there. Yeah. Uh, he is predominantly uh, right sided. And then, I'm not going to bring off Muldoon this time. Nick Horton? Let's take Nick Horton off. Uh, he scored and played really well. Very important player for us now. Let's take uh, him off for Luis Montrose. Who actually... We will drop back. That's what we'll do. Just, uh, it's very difficult to get through this sort of setup, I find. Uh, I think he's a ball winning, yeah. I mean, it's always a risk to play a ball winning midfielder because they just dive into tackles. Um, but yeah, one of the things that I have been looking at has been um, the squad for next season. So, having a look at who we've got on the books. So, the likes of Tom Walker, for instance, uh, has a, a longer term contract. Then, we've signed up people like Danny Phyllis Kirk, who's currently injured, and uh, Nick Horton to extended deals. Uh, Cal Jameson is going to be here next season. Although that is an absolute shambles at the back. I don't know who to blame for that. Blakeman with a good cross. Yeah. Uh, it's a save on the line. But then Kay is the most alert to it. I think it was Andy Kellett there on the post that managed to get it to get to it first. Um, if you had tuned in to BT Sport to see this one. Uh, you would have been treated to a spectacle of goals. A feast of goals. And Muldoon has his hat-trick. On the counter, it's 7-3. Assist from Javan Malcolm, our young uh, on-loan uh, player from West Brom. Uh, it's just a simple, uh, it's like a cushion pass. And Irwin caught out there coming out of his goal. Jack Muldoon has his ninth of the season since returning to Mill Farm. Oh, I'm, I'm properly proud to see that turn around in him. Irwin smothers the ball there. Uh, but not sure what this, uh, how this highlight is going to materialise here. We seem to be under a lot of pressure from Chorley. Uh, I'm struggling to clear the ball, which you never want to see. I think somebody needs to put a foot in here, boys. It's over the bar. That's what we were finding out. It's 7-3. What a game. Oh, you've been lucky to uh, to have been brought this one. I don't know it'll be a long episode, but... Is that another goal? No, it's Irwin. This time with a save. I mean, it's he's hasn't performed extremely well, but... Uh, yeah, Blakeman's certainly somebody on the radar. After this game, uh, I'll just uh, add him to our shortlist. See if we can scout him for the remainder of the uh, season. Because we will need another left-back. Andy Keller, I don't think he's going to be offered a new deal. So, in terms of looking at the squad for next season. Uh, I'm fairly sure that we'll keep hold of Andy Taylor. Uh, and what a game. 7-3. Uh, we will keep hold of Andy Taylor because he's got a lot of experience. That I think is quite valuable. He's also... Uh, set piece specialist as we've seen full passion uh, i'm very pleased with the result the 7-3 win against our local rivals that is definitely what you want to see and we have smashed the goal scoring record 109 goals we've now scored admittedly we must have conceded more than 40 which is more than barnet uh, oh no, sorry. I need to look at the uh, I need to look at the proper stages down after that. Yeah, we have <laughs> we have conceded 47 compared to Barnett's 30. I think it's uh, one of the things that I've been reading recently is about whether defenses or attacks win you titles. I've got a feeling that defenses win you titles, attacks win you cups. Uh, but we seem to have uh, outscored Barnett by 39 goals. But they've conceded 17 less than we have. Um, interesting to see. So we are on course to achieve the record points haul. 
we're on course uh, to achieve that for both uh, ourselves and for the league. And we've just uh, hit our marks for goal scoring. The next thing to do is the record for number of wins in a season, which I think was 31, so I think we've matched that now. In terms of the league, Woking are down there at the bottom. They're now, they're, they're gone. I mean, they're 13 points behind Chorley. It's not going to happen. Same for Boreham Wood, to be honest. The the fat lady is, uh, she's, if she's not already started singing, she's tuning up. And then you've got Halifax, who are six points shy of Chorley, but with two games in hand. So that'll be interesting. I wonder if Halifax are one of Barnett's still to play. Because uh, there are a few teams that uh, look... Oh, no, they're not. They've got Eastley, Dagenham. Ooh, that's going to be a big game there. On Friday the 10th, uh, away at Boreham Wood. And they've got Stockport on the last day. Uh, Stockport, I think, a mid-table now? Yeah, 18th. Uh, which is, you know, their first season back in the National League. Fair play to Jim Gannon there for sort of steadying the ship. Of course, in real life, they've had investment with new owners and things like that. So, uh, and obviously finished just outside the playoffs when points per game were applied. We now are just two wins away from winning the National League. So, a lot's going to depend on what Barnett do over the next couple of games. So, let's see if we can look at fixtures. So, there we have it, 7-3. Muldoon with a great hat-trick. Uh, and he got three assists in that game. I mean, that's, he should take the, the three balls home for that. So Barnett have got Sutton away. Tough game. Now, we don't play on Saturday. Um, or the following Tuesday, when Barnett are at Boreham Wood. So, two losses. Would we win the title after two losses? I mean, they're not going to lose two games. If they do, I think we just need one more point. If my maths is working. No, if they lose, it's 12, isn't it? So, right, if they lose, if they lose those two, we've won the league already. I mean, this is exciting times. And great to see as well. Tom Walker, average rating, top of the shop. Can we just have a quick look? Ah, yes. Proctor and Williams. Uh, 17 and 15 in the league, respectively. But Josh Umra, 28. Keen Harrett, 26. I mean, they are certainly boys that warrant a uh, second glance, I think. Uh, does worry me, doesn't it? That of the two, uh, two players earning the most yellow cards this season, they are ours. And let me guess, have we got anyone on this list? Oh, we haven't. No. We've not had a red card all season. Must not have. So, uh, it was an absolute thriller at Victory Park. Uh, Jack Muldoon with a 9.8 rating. I mean, what a game. Um, I wonder if it's still got his, uh, still commented. Oh, no. They have disappeared from here. That's interesting, isn't it? And the board are pleased with our 7-3 victory, as am I. So, uh, the next game that we broadcast will be the one where we can win the title. So I'm going to go away, do some maths. I think it'll be Ebbsfleet or Torquay, depending on what Barnet do. If Barnet lose their next two games, they're not going to lose the next two, but if they do, we'll have won anyway. And in that case, the next uh, broadcast will be Barnet in the trophy final. But I don't think that's going to happen. Let's find out. Thank you for joining me for episode 22. I will see you in the very near future, where hopefully AFC Fylde will be crowned National League Champions. <laughs>